So I guess it's time to start. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Rosella Blandido. I'm a software engineer for SUSE, and I've been contributing to Neutron for the last year and a half. And um, today I'm going to guide you through the process of uh, writing your first Neutron patch. So usually when I uh, talk to people and I mention uh, Neutron to people that are not very familiar with it, uh, that's the kind of reaction that I get. Uh, it's kind of known that Neutron is a very challenging project. And uh, you know, some people, maybe most people, believe that it's really uh, hard to contribute to it. So uh, what I'm trying to do today uh, with this talk is uh, to get you more familiar with Neutron and uh, to get you to successfully merge your first patch. So that when you hear the word Neutron, your personal reaction will be like mine, that it's more like this one. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, getting a little bit more familiar with Neutron, uh, which is uh, uh, the prerequisite to be able to contribute to it. So um, what's Neutron? I guess uh, most of you, if you're here, you already know it. It's uh, the OpenStack project that uh, takes care of networking as a service. It means that it handles uh, the network connectivity between the several virtual interfaces that are connected to VMs. And it also provides a very powerful API to be able to configure this connectivity. And the API can be used by uh, human operators or by some software that it's orchestrating the cloud. Uh, let's go a little bit more into detail in uh, Neutron architecture. Neutron architecture is modular. Uh, it's composed by several pieces, and maybe that's one of the reasons why it's uh, so challenging, but it's also very interesting. Uh, between the components, uh, let's start with the Neutron server, uh, that it's uh, the one that exposes the API. Uh, then we have a plugin. Uh, Neutron uses plugin to allow more flexibility. You can uh, pick your networking backend and the plugin accordingly, which support this network backend. Uh, the default plugin is ML2. But there are also uh, lots of vendor plugins like Cisco, Arista, Midonet, really, really a lot. Uh, then Neutron uses uh, several agents. Uh, the main one are uh, the plugin agent, uh, that is the one that resides on the compute host and configures uh, the local virtual switch. Uh, then there's the DHCP agent, that as the name says, is the one that uh, configures the DHCP services. Uh, then there's the L3 agent, that it's uh, the one that provides uh, L3 connectivity, uh, netting, and it also takes care of the connectivity to the external world. So it makes the cloud accessible from the external world, and vice versa, uh, enables the cloud to access the external world, the internet, so, so to say. Um, I'm sure that these two slides are not enough uh, for you and that you want to know more. Uh, so what I'm trying to do with this uh, presentation, since I don't have hours, I only have 40 minutes, I'm adding uh, links that you can read afterwards or that you can read when you start writing your patch so that you can uh, acquire uh, more knowledge on your own. And a very good place to start is the networking admin guide. Uh, there you can learn more uh, about Neutron internals, and also you can learn uh, how to configure Neutron. And I guess most of the people here are uh, software developers like me, and I know that we like to go straight to the code. And I suggest you to do that, so please uh, clone the Git repo for Neutron and uh, start uh, navigating through the code. My personal suggestion is, uh, if you don't know it, just uh, try PyCharm. I use it, and it's very handy uh, when you have to go through code that you don't know so well. 
Uh, there are uh, three shortcuts that I use a lot. And uh, there's the control N that lets you navigate directly to a class. Uh, control shift N that uh, lets you open directly a file. And then uh, if you're going through the code and you see a class that you don't know what it is, you can just do control B and you will jump to the declaration. Then another good way for you to acquire more knowledge is to see Neutron in action. And that's uh, like the way I prefer. Usually when, when I don't know much uh, about a, a project, I just uh, install it, launch it, and see how it works. And uh, you can do it very easily with DevStack. Uh, DevStack is a script that lets you install the entire stack. And it's uh, very easy. Like you just need to clone the DevStack repo, and then you launch the StackSH script. Um, all, all the components uh, of OpenStack will run in a screen session that you can uh, resume doing uh, screen-x. And uh, you can see the screenshot here. And every component has its own window. You can navigate through the windows with the usual screen shortcuts. Uh, that is control A uh, quote and then you can just use the arrow to pick a window. And a very good thing about DevStack is that it runs uh, all the services from source. So you can just uh, uh, modify the code at breakpoints and uh, it will stop. You can use the, the Python debugger. And in my screenshot here, uh, I, I, was, I just set a breakpoint for the create port function in Neutron and then in, in DevSec, the breakpoint was hit, and then the debugger stops there, and you can go line by line, you can expect the variables, uh, so you can really discover a lot. And uh, this is also very using, useful if you are debugging a problem. And uh, this is uh, basically the configuration that I use for DevSec, and that I recommend you to use. Uh, the first lines are simply to enable uh, Neutron uh, instead of Nova Network. Uh, this is not going to be needed anymore soon because Neutron is becoming the default for DevStack, but uh, now you need that. Uh, then the following lines uh, are simply uh, hard coding the password for several uh, services. And I do that because I don't want the stack stage to stop and prompt me uh, input a password. I just want it to go straight uh, till the end and complete uh, the installation of the stack. And uh, the very last line uh, is a flag that uh, if it's true, uh, DevStack will install also the test-only dependencies, while by default it doesn't do that. And if you're planning of uh, using DevStack to run the unit test, for example, uh, this is very useful because uh, you will get all the dependency installed and you don't have to install it manually yourself. Uh, here is a list of some comments that I think can be uh, very useful uh, to inspect the networking uh, configuration. Uh, first of all, uh, IP link. I guess many of you know it. It's, uh, it's uh, the tool that we use to display all the interfaces that are on the machine. Uh, also, the virtual interfaces are displayed, and you can use that to check if uh, an interface is up, or uh, simply to check what's on the machine. For example, after uh, you boot a VM, you can check what, if there's a new interface, what kind of interface, and you can uh, keep track of the, of the changings. Uh, then IP. NetNS list, it's uh, the tool uh, to list all the networking namespaces on the machine. Uh, Neutron uses network namespaces a lot, basically uh, mostly to m ensure network isolation. I, I suggest you to g become more familiar with this and learn how Neutron uh, uses the namespaces. You can check that in the admin guide. And so with this command, you can list them. Then if you want to uh, run a command inside uh, a namespace, 
uh, you can use IP NetNS exec. Uh, then you specify the name of the namespace and the command that you want to run. For example, if you want to uh, know the list, the interfaces that are on the namespace, uh, let's say namespace one, you just do uh, IP NetNS exec namespace one IP link. Uh, then we have OVS, VSCTL show, which is a, a very useful tool if you are using ML2 with OpenV switch, uh, which is a very common configuration. And this command uh, will dump all the switches that are on the machine and will also list all the ports. Uh, so if you want to like, uh, keep track of how Neutron configures the virtual bridges, uh, you can do that calling this command. And the last one is, uh, in case uh, you're curious about security groups, uh, security groups in Neutron uh, are a kind of firewall. So if you want to uh, dig more into the implementation, uh, you can just use this IP table dash capital S that will uh, dump all the IP table rules that are on the machines. OK. Um, then I'm sure that, you know, just uh, looking at the code or uh, seeing Neutron in action, you will have questions. Uh, what's uh, the best place to ask your questions? Uh, for sure, uh, IRC is a very good place. Uh, there's a, um, on Freenode, there's a Neutron-specific channel that it's OpenStack Neutron. Uh, I get everybody who's more or less contributing to Neutron is there. And uh, people are very nice, so uh, I suggest you, you just uh, go there and ask your question. I'm sure you'll get a reply. I'm also there if you want to ping me. Uh, then if your question is a bit more elaborated or, and you want, or you prefer to use an email, uh, there are several mailing lists that you can use. Uh, there's the OpenStack mailing list that is for general questions. There's the OpenStack dev. Uh, mailing list for for development related questions, which is the one that you want to use, I guess. Uh, and then there's the OpenStack operators for questions specifically to uh, deploy OpenStack. And then when when you write your email, uh, please uh, follow the mailing list etiquette. Uh, there's a nice link there where you can have all the information. Okay, so now um, we. We have gone through a little bit through what Neutron is. You, let's say you have enough knowledge and you want now to write your patch. Uh, there are two ways that you can take. You can uh, start fixing a bug or you can uh, try to implement a new feature for Neutron. Uh, implementing a new feature is uh, for sure a, a little bit more uh, challenging. Uh, but I, I want to go uh, through that process too because I, I'm pretty confident that after uh, fixing some bugs, uh, many of you will want to do something bigger and add a new feature. So the tool that we are going to use uh, is Launchpad. Uh, this is a screenshot for uh, uh, the Launchpad uh, page for Neutron. And, um, we use Launchpad uh, mostly for uh, backtracking, uh, also for uh, the blueprints. Uh, for those of you who don't know blueprints, uh, blueprints is a, a description of a feature that you want to add to a project. So you, you register a blueprint to propose a new feature. And also Launchpad uh, keeps track of releases and milestones. Uh, in OpenStack, we have uh, two releases per year, and each release is, uh, contains uh, four or five milestones. And also Launchpad, uh, it handles uh, authentication for, for other websites, like for example, Gary, that I will explain later. Uh, so to become a contributor, uh, you need a Launchpad account. If you don't have one, please create one. Uh, so, you want to uh, fix a bug for Neutron. So the best place to start is the bug page uh, in Launchpad. Uh, this is a screenshot, uh, so let me uh, go through some details. So the first column that you see uh, show the bug importance. 
So when a bug is uh, triaged, uh, it gets assigned an importance. It can be critical, it can be a high or a low, it depends. Uh, then the next column is the status of a bug. So if a bug was just filed, it's new. Then if uh, somebody, uh, somebody else different from the one that filed the bug uh, confirms that the bug really is an issue, then he can set the bug to confirmed. Uh, then there are uh, like there's in progress when somebody is working on the bug, and uh, fix committed when uh, when the fix for that bug was already committed. Uh, another uh, thing are tags that you can see at your right at the bottom right. Um, a tag is basically a word that we use to to group bugs that have something in common. Like you can use the DB tag. Um, to identify all the bugs that have something to do with the DB. And uh, I suggest you uh, look for a, a very specific tag, that it's the low-hanging fruit tag, that is the tag that we use to identify bugs that are easy to fix, so that are okay uh, for somebody that is not so familiar with Neutron. So you look for that tag and uh, you, you will have a list of bugs you can pick one and assign it to you. Uh, it's very important that you assign it to you uh, because it means that you're working on it. So somebody else uh, won't work on the same bug. It's a way of avoiding a race condition. Uh, so here, uh, let's go through uh, the process of fixing a bug. So basically here, I'm, I'm just describing what I'm us usually doing. Uh, first of all, uh, you should try to reproduce the bug. Uh, if it's not a trivial bug, like if it's a typo, of course you don't need to reproduce it. Mm, but if it's a bug, you, you should try first to reproduce it. In that way, then you will be able uh, to debug it. Um, if you can use DevStack, like if you can reproduce it on DevStack, uh, then um, that's probably the best because it's an isolated environment and you have more control, you can set breakpoints, uh, so it's, uh, it's gonna be easier to find the problem. But I if you can't reproduce it on DevStack because maybe uh, you have to use some kind of hardware, specific hardware to reproduce it, uh, then you can just uh, use log statement uh, and uh, try to try to understand uh, what's the problem. Then once, once you have an idea of what, what's going on, you can start writing your patch. Uh, after that, you, you can test it. Since uh, you know how to reproduce the bug, you can test it and uh, verify that with your patch, the bug doesn't appear anymore. Uh, of course, it can happen that you didn't really fix the bug uh, and your test fails, so you have to go back, rework a little bit your patch and then test it again and so on. It's a kind of iterative process, especially for hard bugs. And uh, so when, you, when you're uh, writing a bug fix, uh, write also unit tests. Uh, this is required uh, for Neutron, and there's a very good reason to do that. It's uh, to avoid regression. Like, if you fix a bug and you add a unit test, then if uh, somebody in the future uh, some part of the code will be changed and the same bug will be introduced, then your unit test will fail and so the regression will be avoided. And also, um, I'll tell you that sometimes unit tests can be very handy, uh, at least for me, uh, especially when you have like that iterative process of fixing, because if you write a unit test, it's uh, easier to tackle those lines of the code that that uh, contain the bug, so you don't have to manually reproduce the bug. You can just run the unit test, and uh, finding a fix is going to be quicker. So uh, now, uh, like you're uh, brave enough, and you want to propose a new feature for, for Neutron, uh, this is uh, like the workflow that you should follow. Uh, as I was telling you before, uh, you need to register a blueprint in Launchpad, uh, but that's not enough for Neutron. You also have to add uh, a design specification. So as the name says, the uh, design specification is something that goes more in depth. 
uh, you can you have to use a template. You can have a look at the template. Uh, uh, I, I put the, you the link there, and uh, you see it's very detailed. Like you have to explain uh, what uh, so your change, what what's gonna, uh, what tasks are gonna be uh, needed to add, uh, what's the impact on the developer, what's the impact on the user, so that you can really uh, think uh, through the change that you are proposing. And, uh, and then when you're ready, uh, you upload your design spec in Garrett. And uh, uh, design spec, they will follow uh, the same workflow as uh, normal patches. Uh, and I will explain it to you in the next slides. Uh, then what happens? There's a, a special group uh, called uh, Project Drivers that for Neutron is a subset of core reviewers. And uh, these people, uh, they know a lot about the project and uh, the direction that the project will take. Uh, so they, they are in charge of appro approving uh, the blueprints or not ap approving them. And they will also set a priority for your blueprint. So now you, you have your patch ready. And uh, I suggest uh, you that to run some tests before submitting it. Uh, just to make sure that your patch uh, is working and is okay. And anyway, tests are gonna be run uh, in Garrett, so uh, it's better if you run it before. Um, so let's go and uh, sp speak a little bit about what you should run. So the, the first um, kind of test that I run is a, a style check. Uh, this is uh, performed using Flakeate. And it's based on the hacking document that I linked here. Uh, basically, the hacking document is uh, the style guide that the community uses. Uh, and to run the style check, you just do um, run test, that it's a script that you find in the neutron root, and you specify the flag dash p. Uh, if, if it's fine, like in the screenshot, you will just uh, see that. If there's a problem, uh, it, uh, it will be displayed so that you will be able to fix it and then uh, run Flake 8 again and make sure that you really fixed it. Uh, then uh, unit tests. Um, to run unit tests, uh, you can use the same script run test without any argument. It will run all the unit tests in the neutron repo. Or you can use talks directly. And if you want to run just one test, uh, what you can do is to use uh, the run test script and then specify the path of the test. You can use also talks. Uh, you do talks uh, dash e to specify an environment, in this case, uh, Python 2.7, and then the path of the test. And this will run only that test. Then if you want to uh, debug the unit test, or if you just want to be able to use the debugger uh, when you launch the unit test, you have to specify a flag. Otherwise, it won't work. So for, for run test, you just do run test uh, dash d, and then uh, the module that you want to test. And if you want to use stocks, it's a little bit longer. Anyway, that's the way to do that. And uh, if you want to uh, know more about testing for Neutron, uh, there's a link there that you can follow. So uh, now like, you've run the test. So you're ready to submit your first patch. Uh, and so we are going through the process of the submission. So first of all, let's uh, talk briefly about Git. Uh, which is a very important tool, and it's the tool that we use uh, to manage the code. If you're not familiar with it, uh, try to get familiar because it's really important. There, there are lots of tutorials online, I'm sure you'll find a way. And so uh, to recap a bit uh, what we've been doing, uh, so the starting point is to clone the Neutron repo. Uh, then. Uh, we, we want to uh, fix a bug or we want to add a feature, and a good developer would uh, create a topic branch for that. So git checkout dash b and the name of the topic branch. Then uh, we write our patch, we 
modify the code, we maybe add some new files that you need to add to Git using Git add, and then we are ready to commit. So we do Git commit, and our patch is ready. So at this point, uh, we want to submit it uh, so that the patch can be reviewed and can be finally merged. The tool that we use is Git review. Uh, you can install it using pip. And so you just type git review, and this will uh, upload your patch upstream and send it to Garrett. Uh, then in Garrett, people will review it, tests are going to be run. So you might have to modify a little bit your code to address some comment or fix some tests. And in this case, uh, you modify your code, and you, uh, you use git commit amend to amend your commit, and then git review again to update your patch upstream. So some uh, words about Garrett. Uh, Garrett is uh, the tool that we use for code review. Uh, this is a screenshot of the OpenStack Garrett. And I'm going to explain you more in detail the column that you see on the right, those values and what they are. So Garrett is also very important because it's uh, the automatic gatekeeper. I don't know if you're familiar with this concept. Uh, anyway, Garrett uh, will uh, run the test every time a patch is submitted. And then when the patch is approved by reviewers, uh, before uh, merging uh, the patch, tests are going to be run again. And the merge happens only if tests successfully pass. So this is a way of uh, make sure that the code quality stays steady. And that's why it's called automatic gatekeeper. We, there, there's no human merging code in OpenStack. This is done automatically through Garrett and Jenkins. Jenkins is the tool that runs the test. OK, uh, you can see here a screenshot of our review. Um, like You can see that there's a comment there. And you can see patch set number eight. It means that I uh, updated my review eight times. Anyway, if you just go to the Garrett website, I think the UI is pretty straightforward, so I'm not spending more words on it. What I want to talk about is those uh, columns that you uh, saw in the previous slides. Like there's the code review column, uh, that it's the column that shows the result of the review of, of the people. Everybody can review code um, and can assign a plus one or a minus one. Uh, a plus one means that the patch is good, means lo it looks good to me. Uh, minus one, it means that there's some problem in the patch uh, that should be addressed before merging. Then there's uh, the group of core reviewers that can also uh, give plus two and minus two. Uh, plus two, it means that uh, the patch is approved. Minus two, it's a strong veto. It means that there's some real problem with the patch, that it's maybe introducing uh, a very dangerous bug. Or So minus two, it means uh, don't merge it at any cost. Uh, then there's the workflow column. Uh, it can be plus one or minus one. A workflow plus one is... Uh, given by core reviewers again, and it means uh, this patch can be merged, merge this patch. And um, the plus one is given uh, when two core reviewers have, us have given plus two to that patch. Uh, workflow minus one uh, is usually um, given by the submitter of the patch. It simply means that the patch is a work in progress. So when you want to uh, like share your code, you want to get some feedback, but you know that it's not ready to be merged, uh, you just set workflow minus one, and people will, will know, will give you feedback, but they will be aware that it's not a finished patch. Then there's the last column, the verified column, that it's for uh, CI, uh, continuous integration tools. So uh, this column can be plus one, that means verified, so it means all the tests are passing, or minus one when some test is failing. Uh, lots of tests are, are run by the CI. 
like unit test, style check, integration test using Tempest, that it's uh, the official uh, testing project for OpenStack, and upgrade tests using Grenade. So it's really a lot of tests. And also for Neutron, since I was, uh, I was telling you at the beginning that Neutron uses plugins, so a plugin uh, to be in the Neutron uh, tree uh, is obliged to have a CI, uh, a vendor CI. So for Neutron, uh, we have the OpenStack CI that is common with the other project, and then the vendor CI that, that it's uh, um, that it's by the vendor that provides the plugin. This is to make sure that uh, a change in Neutron uh, doesn't affect the plugin. And uh, logs are accessible, like all these uh, CI, they, they are obliged to publish the logs. So in case of failures, you can just have a look at the log and uh, check what, what didn't work. So now, finally, you have submitted your patch and you're just uh, waiting for gathering reviews or you already got reviews. And here I'm just giving you some suggestion about the review process. So uh, every time you update your patch, like every time you get a comment or some test is failing and you have to upload uh, a new patch set to update your patch, this, is like, this back and forth is very costly for you in terms of time and also for the reviewers. So let's try to minimize this back and forth. And here are like very uh, simple advices that, that are useful. Uh, so check the spelling. Before you submit your patch, make sure you don't have any spelling error. Otherwise, you'll get some comment and you have to fix it. Uh, then uh, if some part of the code is not uh, very, very clear or if some uh, background information is needed, add a comment. Uh, it, it's gonna, like for sure somebody's gonna ask, so it's better if you add a comment. Uh, then before submitting the patch, uh, run the style check and the unit test. Uh, as I was telling you, they are gonna be run by the CI anyway. So make sure that the patch is working on your local machine. Otherwise, for sure, you, you'll have to fix it when you get the result from the CI. Uh, create small patches. Uh, small patches are easier uh, to review. Uh, so if your patch can be split into two, and it still makes sense, I suggest you to do that. It's also better for the statistic because you'll have two commits instead of one. So if you care about the chart, it's a good way to improve your position. Uh, do one logical change per patch. Don't mix uh, logical changes in the same patch. It's uh, confusing for, for the reviewers and it's also not the, the right thing to do. And uh, try to avoid dependent patches if possible. It's not always possible, but you have to be aware that it's uh, a pain to deal with them because every time you up update a, a patch, then you have to update all the patches that depend on it. And now some uh, suggestion for the commit message, which is probably uh, the, the first part that people are gonna look at in your patch. So try to describe as clear as possible uh, what your patch is addressing. Don't explain so much what you're doing because we can infer that from, from the code, but explain why you're doing that and how. And so don't be afraid of being verbose. I, I'd say it's better if you are a bit verbose, but if you explain clearly everything. Uh, then use a special tags in the commit message, they, they were created for a reason. They, they perform some useful action. Like for example, if you uh, use the closest bug tag to specify that your uh, patch is fixing a bug, uh, then this will automatically update uh, the bug page in Launchpad. And uh, for example, if your change is introducing uh, uh, something that needs then the documentation to be updated, you can use the doc impact flag. And uh, this will file automatically a bug for the documentation team, and they will fix the bug and update the documentation. 
So you can get more uh, tips uh, if you follow that link. And now uh, some suggestion when you're getting reviews. So try always to be polite. I know it's trivial, but I think yeah, anyway, it's, it's a good rule. Um, then when, when you get a comment, uh, try to answer. Like if you're going to uh, address that comment, so if you're going to apply that suggestion, uh, reply done. Uh, it's gonna be easier then for the reviewer to follow what you've done and what not. If you're not going to apply that suggestion, there must be a reason for it. So just answer and explain the reason. Don't just ignore the comment because then somebody else is gonna ask. And uh, so s sometimes people complain because it's hard to get reviews. And it's true because th there are lots of patches in Neutron and probably not so many reviewers. Anyway, a good way of getting reviews if you are, it's uh, to be involved in the community. So try to, to be there for the neutral meeting, try to be on IRC, try to uh, write on the mailing list, try to talk with people, and especially a good way is to uh, review other people's code. So I'm pretty sure that if you do that, somebody will also review your code. And so here I give some uh, suggestion about reviewing other people's code. Uh, again, uh, be polite. Uh, then if you don't understand uh, something, uh, it's better if you ask a question. Uh, maybe it simply means that uh, the code needs some renaming or that some comment needs to be added. Anyway, it, don't be afraid of asking questions, even if uh, like it can seem trivial, but most of the times it's not. Uh, when you're giving a suggestion, uh, make sure you provide an example. Like, don't write uh, 10,000 words explaining what should be done if you can write three lines of code and make it very clear. So prefer using code snippet if possible. And uh, if you give a minus one, so it means that the patch has some problem, uh, try to follow that patch. Don't forget about it. Because for sure the submitter will, uh, will reply Maybe it will upload uh, a new patch set, so it will update the review, and you have to check that your comment was addressed. Or the submitter thinks that your comment is not valid, so it's not uh, gonna do anything. In that case, uh, you wanna be there to remove your minus one, because if your minus one stays there, and this can prevent other people from reviewing that patch, sometimes people don't review patches that got minus one, because they were already reviewed. Or uh, even worse, uh, if, uh, if the patch uh, uh, is gonna be merged, so core reviewer approved it, usually they don't merge it if uh, there's still uh, minus one pending. So somebody will ping you on IRC or just to make you remove that minus one. So it's a situation that you want to avoid, try to, to follow up the patches. And uh, when you're doing code reviews, uh, try to prefer uh, quality versus quantity. It doesn't really matter if you do 100 reviews and if you just read briefly through the code. Uh, it's really worth taking your time, uh, go deep. You can even test uh, a patch locally. But really, that, that's a process that it's rewarding. You'll uh, provide a better review. And also, you as reviewer, you learn a lot. Reviewing, um, you learn a lot about uh, Python, about programming in general, about OpenStack, and about Neutron. So it's really worth it. And uh, that was my last slides. Thanks, everybody. If you have any question, I th think we have some minutes, one minute, something like that. <laughs> Yes? Is, uh, is Nova going away? You mentioned Neutron becoming the default. Is that where the focus should be if we want to look at network development? Uh, Nova network, yeah. It's, uh, like the default will be Neutron. So yes, I guess the focus is on Neutron now. Yes. I mean, uh, our company recently uh, trying to have a third-party CI 
and then uh, it's been a little challenging. And then uh, I don't know if you are doing right. Uh, uh, yeah, um, there I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a wiki page for that. There's also, because uh, like when they introduced that, there were lots of talking about it. So there are also people that uh, like follow the process for other CIs. So if I can give you like uh, some suggestion with who you should talk. Anyway, it's challenging because you have to uh, set up Jenkins, you have for every patches that it's submitted, you have to run the tests, so you need an infrastructure to do that. And then you have to make the logs available, so you need a storage for the logs. So yes, it's kind of challenging. And if you're doing that, I mean, there are people that have gone through that, so they brought a documentation and there are also like kind of workflow in place for that. I, uh, maybe I have a just a specific question then. Uh, how you actually submit your test results? I know the in the we read about this third party plugin on yeah. the CI testing requirement doc. He has a specific format and then he has instruction that we have to submit it. Uh, is that actually submitting to a uh, public uh, OpenStack Jared or is that we have to actually submit our HTML, I mean HTTP uh, URL. No, you're, you're submitting directly to Garrett. So you, you just, you, you run the test and then you, you like uh, submit the result, like a plus one if uh, it worked or minus one uh, using the Garrett, uh, like uh, there's an API for that. And then you publish the logs, yeah. I don't know if that was the question. Oh, okay, then you answer the question. Okay. I guess, yeah, thanks everybody.